You're good to so, go. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure because I need to do twining. And it's kind of like when you're wool weaving, you do twining to start off and you end with twining. And that's just like securing your weaving. So how I would measure it is I would do one, two, three, four. I'm do, going to do four rows, so I'm going to do five just to make sure there's extra. I'm going to go like this. But also, what I realized when I'm weaving, that would make four rows nicely across. But I could also double this amount, and it'll make, it'll add to my tails here. So we're just going to do that. Just makes it really look nice and um, it just makes it look a lot nicer. The next step I want to do, which I often forget, is I need my wool for weaving this way for the for the next step, which is twilling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, that's this is an arm's length. So I've done this is my third arm's length. To do a full headband takes six arm lengths. So I'm at five, and then I'm at six. You don't have to do that. You can do an add-on. Add-ons are fine. Um, I just don't. I don't like doing add-ons for my own reasons, but many people do add-ons. So what I'll do is I'll just go like. <clears throat> I'll go like this, just to measure it. See, so it's the same measurement as behind, and I'll go like this. And what I want to do is I just want to weave that with that one because I'm going to use that for the rest of my weaving. Then I'm going to go like this around with these two here. Make sure that they stay met. And I'm going to go so it's around the first one, behind the second one. Now this, so it's always the outside one that you're weaving with. So you go in front of this, behind, over the second one, behind the third one, Oops. like so. And we want to try and keep our tension as evenly as possible. So now I'm going in front of the third one, behind the fourth one, in front of the fourth one, behind the fifth one. in front of the fifth one, behind the sixth one. So it's just basically what you're doing is twining right around it. <clears throat> over the sixth one, behind the seventh one, over the seventh one, behind the eighth one. Now we're going to do what's called a switchback. And you take the inside one, you go underneath the outside one like that, through here, through behind, and through the first one. So what you're doing is you're just creating a knot. Now you're going to do your twining backwards. So this becomes your outside one. It goes in front of the first one, behind the second one. And I know I feel like I'm really exaggerating this, but it, it really helps to remember. So in front of the first, second one, behind the third one, in front of the third one, behind the fourth one. And we just keep doing that same pattern all the way back. And then we'll do another switch back at the end. And just to be mindful, like I use, when I buy wool, I like to use, I think it's called six gauge or six weight. People use, they use different terms up there. But as long as you're using a really thick wool, your projects will be done a lot faster because and I've tried using thinner wool and the projects take a lot longer and it gets really quite overwhelming especially if you're a new weaver like even for me I've been weaving since 2008 and it's still overwhelming for me so now I'm doing a switch back so I take the inside one go underneath the outside one behind and through the first one and I'm gonna, just going to keep doing that all the way. So in front of the first one, behind the second one. You can kind of judge that your tension might be a little too loose. You can pull it. 
in front of the second one, behind the third one, in front of the third one, behind the fourth one, in front of the fourth one, behind the fifth one, and through. So you're just going to keep doing that pattern all the way across. Um, I found that um, when I'm teaching people, it's a lot better to exaggerate this because it's something that we're not familiar with. It's something that we might not have ever done before because weaving has been a lost art. So it's a lot easier if I kind of overdo it than underdo it. So now we're doing the switch back. So I take the inside one, go underneath the outside one, and behind and through the first one. And then I do my pattern again, and I'm doing it backwards. And you can tell that the weaving looks different on the alternate rows. And it's supposed to look like that because you're doing the pattern backwards. And there's my fourth row. <clears throat> Makes it, you can do it tighter, uh, tighter is fine, but for me I find like um, making it just a little bit looser, it just helps secure all of that. So when I get here, I've done that. So now my next step is to tuck these in and I'll take a darning needle and just put it on the darning needle and just bring those two strands to the end so that they're secured in. Of course, I left them in the car. <laughs> <laughs>